Welcome back to the Scotland Magic YouTube channel. My name's Gabby and I'm really excited to take you along for today's video. We are going to be talking about relocating to Scotland. So for those of you who don't know, I moved over from Australia to Scotland in October 2020 in the middle of the pandemic, <laughs> um, largely because Scotland had stolen my heart away and I just felt like it was my sole home and it's where I wanted to live. And also because I met Billy on one of my trips and he definitely put the icing on the cake. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about things that I have experienced and slash tips. So tips slash things that I did uh, and just giving you a bit of insight into the relocation. So if you have any questions or any follow-up stuff that you'd love to know, feel free to pop them in the comments below and I'd love to make any additional content for you guys or just answer them in the comments. But I want to preface this by saying uh, I am by no means a visa expert or a relocation expert. Uh, so this is just simply my experience and I just felt like sharing that with you guys today. Oh, and it's also the question I get asked the most about the relocation. So I figured I may as well make a video about it. So let's dive on in. So the first thing that you should know before you move, move to a new city is that rose colored glasses is absolutely a thing. So often people will kind of rock up to a city and be like, oh my God, I love it here so much. I could I could move here, I could live here. And that's partly maybe because you're on holiday and you're kind of feeling like your best version of yourself and you're just vibing. Um, but it can also be because you've genuinely fallen, genuinely fallen in love with the place. So for a bit of context, I arrived in Scotland on the eve of my 27th birthday, recently single, had never desired to visit Scotland ever in my life. It just wasn't for me. Well, not for, not for me, I just didn't really know enough about it to know how fucking fabulous it would be. Um, but my sister's boyfriend's Scottish and he really recommended I come and visit at the end of a trip that I had already booked at a few days spare. So he's like, why don't you check out Scotland and the Highlands? So I did that and got here on the evening of my 27th birthday and literally immediately fell in love with the city. But I did kind of worry, maybe it is just rose colored glasses. It's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful country. Surely everyone feels this way when they arrive. Before I started to sort out a visa to relocate here, um, I decided to come over for a six month trip and just kind of work and live and just kind of explore the UK and make sure that it wasn't rose colored glasses when I got to Edinburgh. So I spent the first couple of months exploring the rest of the UK and then came over to Edinburgh, sublet a flat for a couple of months just to make sure that living in the city felt like how it felt to visit the city. So if you are considering living in Scotland or anywhere else in the world, I would really recommend spending at least a couple of weeks to a couple of months just temporary living in that city just to make sure that actual day-to-day -day life is enjoyable for you and something that you want to do rather than just the holiday version of yourself because they are two very different people. <laughs> so yeah, you can get rose-colored glasses when you visit a city, but uh, I did visit you know, Edinburgh first off, loved it, and then decided to come and stay for a couple of months and that just really kind of solidified it for me. That's when I met Billy as well. And yeah, I just felt like I really enjoyed my day-to-day -day life in Edinburgh. I always felt like I was buzzing and really excited to explore it. I'm a huge winter person as well. So the moody grim weather was like perfect for me. So that's my first tip. Visit first, stay a little while, and then just make sure it's really the place for you. The second thing that you should know is that you're going to want to have a bit of money behind you before you do this. And depending on where you are in the world, the visas are going to be all different. But coming from Australia, I had to spend a couple of thousand dollars to pay for that visa and to also pay for my NHS, which is the medical service here so I did have to spend a bit of money to get the visa initially and that was for a two-year working and like living and working visa it's called a youth mobility visa so I did have to have some money behind me one to be able to afford that and two to be able to support myself because I am self-employed so to be able to support myself during that journey while I was waiting for some work to come through so really just having a bit of cash behind you even like a couple of months just while you're getting sorted so say you've done the six month thing or the three month thing you have vibed you've got your visa and you're here you know you're not guaranteed a job straight away when you first move here so having a bit of financial answers behind you. One, to just wait for a job to come through and two, to enjoy yourself when you first get here. I always recommend when people relocate to go and enjoy the city, join some clubs and groups or sporting things or go dancing or join a craft club and go to events and meet people and spend money, go to restaurants. You know, you're going to have to also set up your space as well when you move into a new flat. So buying new bed linen and just little things that help you feel it at home. So having a good amount of cash behind you before you do this is going to make you feel so much more at peace and at ease when you get to the city. The third thing that you should know is that when you've relocate, you're going to get regular decision fatigue. So something that I really just did not anticipate when I moved here was how often I would get so frustrated trying to figure out the really basic things that I was so used to doing in Australia. Things like, how do I do my taxes here? How do I pay for car insurance? Because we got a car as well here. You know, how do I sort out my car insurance? How do I change my Australian license to a British license, which you don't have to do immediately, FYI. We just had to do it because we've lived here for longer now. Um, you know, just little things over and over that were so kind of common or things that I just knew how to do in Australia. Or I had my family there. So like my mum and dad, could tell me how to do these things or I had an accountant or I had you know all of these people in place um, at my you know original home so that I knew how to solve problems and do this so you get constant decision fatigue because you're always trying to solve problems and do things in the way that the new country that you're living in operates and even just little things like where do I get my hair done where do I go to the dentist I love to get my nails done where do I do that is that a thing you know what time are places open till what time do they open in the morning like just little constant decisions that you have to make constantly or constant things that you have to be aware of all of the time 
um, can get very, very tiring and get worn out very, very quickly. So just know that if you can try and find some like support quite early on, like if you've got friends here and they've got parents here, like you kind of adopt their family as well to help you answer some of these questions. I've definitely found so much help in my friends and their parents being able to answer things like tax and cars and all of this kind of stuff when I moved here. Um, you know, finding a good accountant and things like that. It's worth taking the time to meet these people so they can help answer some of these questions for you when you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed and in that decision fatigue and rut. Uh, it is something that I really just did not anticipate to feel, but the mental load that that can sit on you is, is quite heavy and it can feel, it can weigh you out after a while. So find some good people to help support you in your journey and it's going to make this a lot more pleasant. When you first move to a new country, unless you know people already, it's going to be a bit lonely. And even if you do know people, it still feels really lonely. Um, you find yourself leaning on the same people over and over again because they're familiar and they're safe. And um, you know, you might even make friends with people who aren't actually really people that you would normally be friends with, but because you're so worried about being alone, you know, or not having pals, you kind of just stick in these friendships. So it is really normal to feel a little bit lonely, but the benefit of this is that you really get to understand yourself and learn who you are. So nothing makes you dive deep and understand who you are at the core of yourself than being by yourself and actually figuring this out. You know, how do I handle loneliness? How do I handle living in a new country? How do I handle this decision fatigue? Who am I as a person? And actually, who do I want to be as a person? I found this extremely liberating and anyway, I've spoken to has who has moved overseas I find this as a common denominator between them is who they were prior to them relocating versus who they are now are two very different people uh, you really get to mold yourself and be exactly who you want to be when you move to a new country and that's incredible it's incredibly powerful and you can't do that when you're living in your hometown because people have stories and memories about you their own expectations their own ideas when you meet new people and when you move to a new city it's like a blank canvas and you get to be exactly who you want to be so that is one benefit of being a little bit lonely when you move somewhere is the opportunity to mold yourself into exactly who you want to be. Um, but I will say that if you're wanting to make new friends when you're moving to a city, that joining into Facebook groups in hobbies and things that you really love to do is a great way to start. As I said, if you're into dancing, take yourself to dance classes and book to a, like a full-term course. Or if you are someone who's into craft, there's craft clubs and things. And you know, there's always like a pocket of people in your niche everywhere that you go. So try and find the things that you like doing and then find a club for it or find a group that does that. If you're moving to Scotland, FYI, little, <laughs> I'm going to just throw this in there. I have a club here called the Main Character Club, which you can find on Facebook. And that's a women's only club um, of both locals and travelers alike uh, to connect with each other and just help them feel a little bit less lonely in the city. So feel free to come and join that if you're coming to Edinburgh, whether you're moving or you're just visiting. But finding clubs like that in the city that you're going to or the place that you're moving to is gonna be extremely helpful in helping find your people very quickly. That is literally what I did when I moved to Edinburgh. Before I even moved here, I joined a group called Edinburgh Ladies and just put in there to meet up with some people for some coffees. And I'm a photographer, as you know, so I ended up putting in um, that group to do some free shoots and stuff just to meet people, connect with people um, and just put myself out there as well. It was very important for me to build a circle of friends very quickly when I moved here because I had a great circle in Australia. Still do, but you know, they're far away. So it was really important for me to build a circle of friends before I moved here. I would, like, you know, have some connections of people to meet up with when I got here so I didn't feel that like extreme loneliness. Um, and the other tip that I want to give you, there's so many things I could talk about, but the last thing I want to talk about in this video to keep it short and sweet is to have an exit strategy <laughs> slash have a ongoing strategy. So with your visa, for example, the Australian one is, is only two years long. So I really had to think like ahead of time, if I love this place enough to live here longer than two years, what is my plan? What am I going to do next? Uh, luckily for me, Billy and I were in a relationship before I started my visa. So we were able to go down the spouse and partnership route, which um, FYI again, costs a bit of money to do that. And is a huge faff, especially because we're both self-employed. So, oh my God, Lord help us. But if you are wanting to extend and live here a little bit longer, you need to have a look down those routes nice and early so that you can start to prepare some paperwork. So I knew from friends who had lived here and stuff that that was a thing. So we started preparing our paperwork like months before I even moved here, got our names on joint bills and all that kind of stuff so that we had enough behind us to get that sorted. So either having an exit strategy on how you're going to leave and how you're going to integrate back home or how you're going to plan on staying longer in that country. Thank you so much for joining today's video. I hope that's been insightful and helpful for you. If you have any other questions, feel free to pop them in the comments, um, but make sure you like, subscribe and follow uh, so that you can join in for the next set of our educational series here on Scotland Magic. Thank you so much for watching.